My father is working until now, and I am working. So they're accusing him of working on, on Sabbath. You're working. You're not supposed to work on the Sabbath. And he says, my father's working. And I always do what my father does. I'm working. That's all he says. <laughs> now, let me tell you what I think that means. I think this is awesome. I think he's saying, the Father and I created the world. It was beautiful. It was a paradise. It was perfect. And we rested on the seventh day, not because we were tired. We never get tired. We stepped back, as it were, to simply enjoy the manifestation of our glory in the paradise of a universe that we made perfectly. It was redolent, radiant with our glory, and we enjoyed it. I think that's the essence of what Sabbath is. Sabbath is a day set aside for the enjoyment of the glory of God in a restful way. That's what Sabbath is, or the Lord's Day now, since Jesus has risen from the dead. But that's not where this text is going. This text is not going about behaviors on Sunday. This text is all about my Father is working on the Lord's Day, and I am working on the Sabbath, Sabbath, Sabbath. We made it. It was beautiful. We rested. And then... Sin entered the world and broke it. And when sin came into the world, sickness came into the world. Like at the pool of Bethesda, and that mass of people ruined and broken by the fall. And death came into the world, and calamity came into the world. And this world isn't the way we made it to be. And as soon as that happened, on the very day when this world fell under my father's curse, he and I started working again. And we've been working until now. I think that's what he means when he says, my father is working until now. Meaning, from the day this world was broken, my father started to repair. You may not understand why it's taken so many thousands of years, and you may get in our face. The world always criticizes the way God does things, which is why at the end of Romans 9 to 11, which describes the incredible way God is saving the world, he says, oh, the riches of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable are his ways. Who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given a gift to him that he should be repaid for from him and through him and to him are all things to him be glory forever. That's why Romans 9 to 11 ends that way because it He's saving the world in such a roundabout, long, strange, involved Nobody would ever thought of way. 